All right, so I um, I started a WordPress.com blog, um, and it's just a demo. So what you see here is just uh, just another WordPress site. I have three posts, you know, the typical hello world, um, a second post, a third post with a comment, and I also have an additional page, a calendar page. And this is just to show you when I export this into a new WordPress blog that um, this will work. So I'm going to log in. I hope I remember. Uh, all right. So this is the dashboard for WordPress.com. Um, and you can see you have the dashboard, your number of posts. Oh, I think a lot of you, you are familiar with it. If I'm going way too fast, please slow me down. Um, what we want to do first is go to the tool section. And from the tool section, we can go to export. And what this will do is give you, I'm going to download all the authors, I'm the only author. We're going to save this XML file that it gives you. So this is going to go into, I think, my downloads folder. Okay. And we're done. So that's my export. It, it copied all the posts, it copied the comments, copy the pages and it copies it also copies the the categories um, tags basically the, the entire file structure of every single post and content or story that you make yes some of them yes um, for the most part it will try and if you if you actually so let me go to um, let me go to a post. So if, if you actually upload your media using the built-in WordPress add an image tool, it will migrate your pictures over to your new blog. If you actually keep your pictures or, or movies on a separate folder on the server, then it won't. Actually, I'm, I take that back. Um, that, that, that's true for the WordPress.org sites. Um, the WordPress.com, I actually don't think you do. You're right. I'm sorry about that. Let's go back. Um, you see, one whole file is the word for WordPress.org. Yes. And you keep them separate if words for WordPress.com. For pic no, for pictures, if you upload pictures on your WordPress.com site and want to move them over to your WordPress.org, you would almost have to keep the same file structure. Uh, which won't happen because you, with the WordPress.com, we don't have access to their servers, so we wouldn't be able to take those pictures back. So the, the, the best solution is to keep them separate. Yes, yes. Uh, use you know a, a, a like Flickr or Photo Bucket, um, Picasa. Um, you can definitely store your pictures there and then link link to those sites. So we've we've exported this, and what I want to do is go back to the slide now, and I'm going to actually show you how to install onto this on the server WordPress on the server. Do you have a question? Okay, you just a little antsy. So um, I created a HostGator account, and um, you know I, I I have a domain name. Um, I actually have this domain techhelp4.me. Pretty stupid. Anyways, um, uh, what what we see here is that when I go to the dom when I go to the domain, um, the first thing you see is a cPanel login. This is your control panel. And so what I want to do is I want to click this, and it asks me for my name and password. And it's um, I actually don't know it because I just made it today. Um, you guys can read this. I really don't care. <laughs> Um, oh, I know that. I need my password. <coughs> so I'm going to copy my password. Paste. Log in. No. So this is your uh, control panel for your server. And I'm not going to show this again. Um, what you can see here, you know, each, each server has their own special offers, whatever they, whatever they want. Um, you have preferences, you know, contact info, um, 
your payment options, your email, um, your files, where everything is stored if you want to upload different pictures or, or set up your uh, hierarchy. Um, what we really want to get to is where we, want, where we install WordPress. And um, when we go down to software and services, um, WordPress installation is actually under this um, title called Fantastico Deluxe. And under here, there's a bunch of different software. So you see WordPress is listed under a blog section. But you can also have you know, Drupal, Geeklog, Joomla, um, different PHP forums. So what we want to do here is, you know, for the sake of time, it's, we're just, we're just going to focus on WordPress. And let this thing... You can. It is WordPress in itself is a content management system. Okay. Um, here, the, here the servers just label it as a blog, um, but it is WordPress is more than just a blog. You know, there are a lot of corporations who use it for newspapers and stuff. Um, so we're here at WordPress, and we're going to start a new installation. We're going to do this really quickly. Should only take five minutes. Um, we're going to install this on our domain. If you don't have a domain, you can go out and buy one and um, register it. You can register it through HostGator. So we're going, to we're going to install it here, and we're going to leave this blank. We're going to install on the root directory and admin username, Kurt, password, Kurt. Admin nickname, Kurt. <laughs> description, blah. All right. And then we just click install WordPress. And... Uh, it makes your databases for you, it does everything for you, and you just click finish installation. And you're all set. And what you can do now is go to your admin page or your um, dashboard for WordPress. It tells you to log in. So, hurt, hurt. There we go. We have WordPress installed in just a matter of minutes. Um, now, we want to import our blog from the WordPress.com to our uh, Tech Help for Me site. So we're going to go back to Tools, and we're going to import this time. It gives you a lot of options to import. Um, we're going to choose WordPress. I don't know. Okay. So browse. Oh, if I can remember where this is. I think it's. Here we are. Today's the 24th. We open the XML. Upload file and import. And we're going to import the author. It's OK. Um, this is the previous author. If you decide to change names, you can keep the original name or you can start a new one. And we're going to, here's where you can download your files or attachments. Um, I actually didn't try it, but I'll have to get back to you on that question. Then submit. And um, it goes through and imports every post, it imports the comments, and um, it keeps track of everything. Since we only had three, po three posts in one page, it took a short amount of time. I imported a, a, a WordPress site into another one, and I had about I don't know, 350 posts with you know a lot of comments, and it took a good couple hours. So it can, depending on how much you've written over the past couple of years, it could be a couple of minutes to a couple of hours. Um, so we're done. Have fun. Oh, and that does not work. It's, it's the cache. Here we go. Tech help for me. Blah. We have our hello world for the original first post uh, when you install WordPress. And then we have our imported post from our WordPress.com site. Okay. Any questions? Yes. I, I, I think that's next. Let me see. 
top five plugins. Okay, so there's a lot of plugins out there. If you're just starting your blog or if you if you have your WordPress.org set up, um, a couple of plugins that you should really start out with is, are, are these five. Um, let me just show these all. Um, there's six here. Akismet's already built in. Um, you just need to grab your API key, which I can show you how to, and register it with your WordPress um, log. But the first one is Super Cache. Um, this one will speed up your, your site. Um, it, what we will do is take images of your homepage, your posts, and when you, know, you happen to get a couple of thousands, tens of thousands of people hitting your site at once, we'll actually pull those images so that it's a lot faster than displaying each individual PHP post and everything else, like your, your widgets, your sidebar. Um, so this is one that um, everyone should have. Definitely speed, speed everything up. Uh, Google Analyticator, this is just a, for metrics. You want to know how many people are actually visiting your site, um, who's stopping by, how many times in a day, a week, a month. Um, it's a simple account that you can create with Google and just sign up for. Um, and then you can just install the plugins in. Okay. Can you recommend that and just go to It's the same. So it, it's, it, so, so, yeah, it, it sits on your dashboard. And what it is is you, you have to set up a Google Analytics account and you get an ID from there. And you link that ID to Google Analyticator. So this is the actual plugin for WordPress. So you don't have to add any tracking code. Well, I did. I already added the tracking code. Okay. So yeah, th this this simplifies it. So you don't have to add tracking code. You just have to enter your ID. So you just register on Google. You register your blog for the Google Analytics to keep track of your site metrics. That's kind of just So they both they vary. Um, I actually use both on mine because I don't trust both numbers. So it's just an average, um, but you you can do both. Google, if you, I I tend to use Google because I also use Google um, Ads, and so you can try and integrate everything into one blog, and it it fits nicely, and you can get all your metrics all at once. Um, WordPress stats doesn't record your visits, which is great, or any other person who's logged on. So it's. So a little bit more biased towards uh, just unique visitors, which is also good. But um, it it's all, it's nice to have both. You, you said that it sits on your dashboard. You mean on the WordPress dashboard? Yes. Um, I can actually show you. So this is my site. This is my dashboard, and let me pull this out. So this is the Google Analytics summary, and then this is the stats. So it actually breaks it down. You can actually see, you know, breaks it down by page, by by refers, by searches, but it also does it here for the WordPress. Ooh, sorry, it also does it here for the WordPress stats. So you can have both, and again, it's just an average. This gives you a little bit more average time spent on site. You know, where they're coming from. Um, it's more upfront, and then when I click this, so you don't have to go into Google. See, this is right here. it's right there. So Google Analytics, you access your analytics, and it pulls it up. Any other questions before we move on? Right. So just to make it clear that. So how do you install it? Where yeah. um, is my? So if we go to the site admin for our new blog, actually, if you go to plugins, um, and you can click add new, you can actually search. And you can just download right within your dashboard, so you don't have to. Yep, yep. You don't have to fool around with any code. It, it just or go to migrate to any sites. Um, just everything's incorporated now.
Okay, you said that we have to use a code number from both Google Analytics to activate. Yep. So um, whenever you have a site, you could they give you a, a number here, and you just copy that number and you import it from Google Analytics. So back to your question about comment system. Um, I was handing out some some stickers. I don't know which sticker you got, but um, there's a discus discuss, um, however you pronounce it, um, and there's also intense debate. So these are two different comment systems that allow you to use OpenID, Facebook, Twitter, um, to log in and make comments on your site. Intense debate actually includes WordPress. So if you have WordPress.com or a WordPress site that you're already logged into, it will pull your information and allow you to make a comment under your profile. Um, but this is this has been widely used in a lot of uh, top tech blogs, and it's a lot easier for people. A lot of people have Twitter or Facebook, or um, or even an open ID, and this allows people to really make comments a lot easier and a lot faster. Can you get more personal. <laughs> So, let me see where I am. Hmm. Want the plugin? It actually should show up on your footer for single page posts. Um, and I'm not sure that you have to do it for pages. So it, it only shows up on, you have the option here. Um, it's, it's only on posts. Instead of, the, instead of the regular comment system, if you want people to actually sign in, you want to know who they, who they are, um, sometimes it's nice to see who's commenting and you can say, oh, so-and-so from Facebook comment made a comment, or so-and-so from Twitter made a comment. It just gives them, uh, gives your blog a little bit more personal feel to it, you know, having a name and a face to go with what they're saying. Is that a moderated? Yes, yes, you can moderate this yourself. Um, so under manage, you can log in and you can moderate your comments. So again, this is all built within the dashboard, um, so you don't have to leave and go to another site. Any yep. Um, yes, yes, so if someone makes a comment, anyone else will be able to see it. So you can't, you, you, you can't make comments private using this. Now if your, your post is private or password protected, then your comments will be hidden, right? Because no one else will be able to see that post or, or story that you write. So it's, it's based upon what you write and how you set your actual post. Um, next one, tweet meme or like. So if you're on Twitter, if you're on Facebook, um, this is a very nice way to share your stories. Um, one thing I forgot to add was share this, um, which is another plugin which also incorporates uh, many other sites. Um, Stumble upon, dig. Um, it's, it's pretty endless. Hmm? There isn't yeah, there is sexy bookmarks as well. Um, I, I, I don't use it. I actually don't know much about it. Um, but it's yeah, it's just another share button. But um, 
what tweet meme and, and like does is it actually puts it in your post. So if someone comes upon it, you can, they can actually just click the button right there and share that story to Twitter, share that story to Facebook, and it directly links to that particular story or post. Um, so it's nice, and you can also, again, it's all metrics. Who else has retweeted this? Who else has shared this? You know, on Facebook, you can keep track of that all on one page. Is that show up on dashboard? That does not show up on the dashboard. Um, that shows up on the individual posts. Um, and again, it, it automatically embeds itself, usually on the top of the page. So when your page loads, you have your like button, you have your tweet meme button, and then your, um, your story. Um, all on one SEO, uh, search engine optimization. So this is a, another one that a lot of people like to get your, your site or, or your posts or stories noticed especially by search engines. Um, I actually don't use all-in-one SEO. I actually don't use any SEO. Um, I know. Um, I'm, 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 I, I know, I know. Um, I, I decided against it. Um, I didn't want an extra layer. Or, um, I'm actually really lazy. So uh, I didn't want to have to put in my tags. Um, I know Google crawls my site anyways. Um, so I didn't want that extra layer of, oh, here's some extra keywords that you need to describe your blog, your posts, your stories, or um, you know, your pages. And you, if you want to get your, your site noticed, if you really want to put the effort of getting out there and, and trying to spread the word that you want to, um, All-in-One SEO is the best plugin tool to, to have for that. And again, Akismet, which is already built in, it's more of a security to block spam. Um, especially spam comments, which um, people get all the time, and that's uh, what I can do. Oh, I can so, if we go to my account from our wordpress.com site, and we go to edit profile, It says my public profiles here, and it says where you looking for your API key and other personal settings. I actually don't know the directly, which is sad. Um, but I go into the, I click that, and I have my WordPress API key here. And what I want to do is I want to copy this key. So copy, and I'll go back to my WordPress.org site, and under my plugins, we have our Kismet um, plugin, which comes with every WordPress install. You want to activate it, and it says right here you must enter your WordPress.com API key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it here, and I'll automatically discard spam. We'll update our options, and you verified, and you're protected against spam. If you go into your WordPress.com site. If you want to, uh, you go to your my account on the top left hand corner. Um, edit profile. It's actually also under your um, your user settings, and click the API key and other personal settings. So your personal settings bar is actually here. Because people have to create this this WordPress.com uh, account if they don't already have it. That's what they have to do. Yes. To yes. So. For those who, who started off on a WordPress.com site, yes, um, uh, you, 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 you know, you have your key right there, but if you actually have your started off on a WordPress.org site, you do need to make a WordPress.com site. And I think WordPress Stats, the plugin to control your metrics, also needs that same API key. So you do need a WordPress.com. It, it's just an account. It's yeah. just an account. It, it, it actually links to say this is a legitimate WordPress account, um, and we will the WordPress or Automatic actually has um, metrics to filter out spam, since a lot of their sites are open on, on a free, you know, WordPress.com is free, and a lot of spammers actually come by and try and make comments on it. So they create their own filter system, and it's just trying to link that filter system to your own personal site.
I know it's a little, it's a little confusing, but, and it's a little backwards, um, but it's the way they organize it. I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. Okay. So any other questions on plugins before I move on? I mean, th these are just the top five that I that are important right off the bat. Um, you don't necessarily have to follow this, but um, there are others that you can search for. I, I don't know. Um, everyone numbers is different because I think it's server based as well. Um, what's the load on your server? How many people are visiting your site? How many other sites are on that particular server? And how hard are they being hit? Um, I don't think super cache caches plugins because it's a separate function. Um, super cache only calls the actual text itself. No, actually, so, super. So, super cache. If you if you want an instant change, so let's just say your background of your of your WordPress site is black and you want it blue, WordPress the super cache will actually keep it black, um, just because it keeps that snapshot of your site. Oh. So you actually have to clean. So you have to actually clean your cache. But what's also good is to clean your actual browser cache as well, and then. Once you refresh it, it should turn blue. So if it's if it, if it's not super cache and if it's not cleaning your cache, your actual browser crash cache, it's it's your server. <laughs> okay, and um, actually the last the last part of is themes. Um, you're gonna want to, you know, a theme that will make your site look a lot better than your traditional blue. Um, this is my WordPress blog site, and I just listed a couple of resources here. Um, Smashing Magazine has always has the top, you know, top ten, top twenty-five themes for magazine for, for layouts, um, photography, um, cooking, or technology, or whatever. They are a great resource. Definitely start there. Do a search. Um, two other sites that have a lot of free themes: Theme Lab, WP Salon. Um, they also have a lot, and then surprisingly enough, Mashable actually has a lot of themes. They they Mashable is actually based off of a web a WordPress, um, and they do a lot by listing themes, and you can actually search a lot of top useful plugins on Mashable as well. Again, Mashable is like a social media, uh, social content site, and then of course you have the premium or paid themes. Um, Studio Press and Woo Themes, two of them, um, you can subscribe to a, like a monthly contract, or you can actually buy the particular theme. Um, and again, with with Pagely, you can pay a little bit extra to have that support from Studio Press or Woo Themes, and you can have the ability to switch themes whenever you want. And then the the two most popular WordPress themes are Thesis and Headway, um, and I've put them up here. Um, again, it's supposed to be user friendly. You can, you're supposed to be able to customize it um, to your liking with, with some ease. Change font, colors, um, excuse me, um, organization, especially the, the headers, the, the, um, the titles, um, all that should be changed. And Headway is, a, um, is the same, almost the same as Thesis, only I think, I don't have any experience with this, but I, from what I've heard, there's, there's a lot of drag and drop where you can actually move things around within uh, your particular post. I, I don't know much about it because I don't want to pay for headway. And I don't think they're going to give me a free copy. Yes? Um, I actually haven't been there. Um, is, it, is it good? That's really cheap. 
Um, yeah, twenty dollars a year is really cheap if you want theme support. Um, one of the things that you want to look for, especially if you're going for a paid theme, is support. You can buy a theme, and it looks nice, but if something breaks down, or if, or if WordPress happens to update, you know, its actual site, um, is your theme going to be compatible with your the newest version of WordPress, and is your theme going to support that? And you need to make sure that they do. So I know Thesis does a really good job of updating and keeping up to date with the latest releases. Um, I'm not, I, again, I don't know much about Headway. James and I have been talking about trying to get a Headway topic going on so that people can ask questions. I think there's a lot of developers and beginners who want to know more about it. Okay. That's the, the quick overview. Um, sorry, it's really short, but uh, do you guys have any questions? Like, I, yeah, I can try and answer any questions if you want, if you guys have problems with your sites. Um, Okay. I, I know there's an update to thesis, and my consultant said to hold off. Do you know whether the bugs are out or if you'll safely uh, update? I have no idea. Um, I, I, I had thesis. Um, I didn't like it. It wasn't, for, it wasn't right for me. Um, it all depends on what I think. It, it all Choosing a theme is what you want to do with your site. Um, definitely try and outline your site and, and how you want to display your message. Um, and then try and find a theme around it. And I'll, I'll give you my site as, ex as an example because you know I want to focus on four main areas. I want to focus on cooking, technology, live blogging, and WordPress. And what this enabled me to do is to keep those top four topics right there. I wanted, I definitely wanted something like a JavaScript or, or a jQuery floating up top to say, to show my top headline stories of my newest post, you know, something featured, and then, you know, my articles down there. Um, the articles didn't matter so much. I, what, what really focused me on was, was this organization of my four headlining topics. Um, it, it's, four columns. It's, four it's not really a column, it's just a divider. Um, for, for your particular topic. Um, the theme is uh, Yamato Magazine by WP Zoom. Um, and I think it's $150 for a developer license. I think it's 79 for a single use. So it wasn't that expensive. Um, it was exactly what I was looking for. Um, you know, this might not be what you're looking for. You might be looking for something a little bit more Simple or more of like a magazine. And there's a lot of other ones out there. But no. Um, again, it, it, I just couldn't organize my my four main categories on the actual front page. Um, this allows me to do that. So, you know, if I, you know, some stories here like the live blog. This this has been there for maybe like a month. Um, so you can see I haven't really done any live blogging, but um, and the last WordPress event was last last month, but I try to update my tech, you know, uh, every few days. Food, I just updated it today. Um, so your blog is more like, uh, your site is more like a info. It is. Than a exactly. So so my site is me, right? Um, I'm I'm not trying to sell anything. Uh, I, I'm not, you know, it's it's. <laughs> um, it's more of a self self branding. Uh, when I actually go to events and sit there and take notes while they're speaking. Uh, again, spend the time to, to really find a theme. Um, don't just go out and pay for a theme. Um, really invest the time and effort into finding something that you really like before you spend the money. Do your research. Um, and it, it, it'll be well worth it. Do you have questions? Yeah. Um, so you can do it this way, or you can go to WordPress.org and actually download your WordPress um, your WordPress files, right? Your zip your zip files. And what you can do is you can unzip it 
and I think WordPress.org has a really nice, easy step-by-step -step instruction on how to actually install it onto your site. Um, and actually builds your databases as well for you. Um, usually Fantastico is nice right off the bat. And then when I, whenever I go to update WordPress from maybe like 2.8 to 2.9, 2.9 to 3, I actually manually do that myself rather than going through Fantastico because I have more control over my blog on the front end rather than having to go back to the server. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's fairly simple, but you know this is the easier way if you're really lazy. Um, and then you can update it yourself whenever you know WordPress or automatic releases a new update. You have that banner on the top that says you know, WordPress 2.0. 9.3 is available. Click here. Update. So, yeah. Yes? Rename as in domain name? Um, is it blog one? So what is your do what is your domain? Is it? Um, is is this? Ask this. Um. Is is that, is that your domain name? Ask. Sign. Is it slash blog one? So I think that's uh, your your actual WordPress install. So um, when when I installed, actually right here, it actually says install in directory. So if if you typed in blog one, that's actually where WordPress would actually be installed. So. Um, that might have happened. Yeah. I actually don't know how you would be able to move that from blog one to the actual domain name. You could do a try a domain re remapping. Slash blog. You should be able to just change your folder name. Back up. Um, um, de 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 well, well def definitely export. You know, before you do anything, if you want to be safe, export your WordPress site and then try it. Um, because most of the times, if it if if you change it from blog one to blog, if it doesn't work, you can just add the one back in and it'll work again. Um, no, you're not export. So, so there is a there is a plugin WP I think database which optimizes your database and can also back up. Um, it is useful. I think I haven't run into a situation where I've actually had to take that database and re-migrate that back into the server. Um, I wouldn't want to learn either. I, I think it's a little bit more complicated than actually just importing and exporting because you now you're actually involving language SQL. Um, I, I would have I I wouldn't know anything further than that. Sorry. So they do. Um, you can back up your database, but. If you, if you add to 
Yes. You would have you would have to make a new page template. Um, WordPress does have uh, WordPress.org does have a, a basic step by step. You would need to know some code. So um, I do have an example. So you see here, I have my sidebars on the right. Um, and actually, if you click secret life of, life of you can see where I am. Um, like this, right? This calendar is really small, and it doesn't fill the actual page. But, and I've done this for, um, I've done this for, for um, host links. So, um, I actually, he actually, um, I actually use his uh, this this particular theme for him as well. If you click calendar, you completely get rid of the sidebar, and you actually fill the entire page. Is that something that you're looking for, no. like to to actually fill the entire void and get rid of those the actual sidebars, or do you want to just pick particular widgets and have them for particular pages? Okay, so you, you would you would have to create a page template, and it's a little bit more complicated because you will have to call particular widgets to appear in your page, um, and that's where you would actually have to copy code and put it into your page template. Uh, <laughs> um. Most of the times, um, it's yeah, it's hard because it, each 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 widget is is separate, so you might have to call separate functions, and I actually don't know. Right. Wow, that's really that. Um, the page templates aren't aren't. You start off with a, a basic header, which WordPress.org, um, in, in the uh, I guess the help file. They said they give you like a little bit background on, on what you actually want to do. Um, I actually can't remember what I did for this, um, but. You should be able to search around. And I can talk to you afterwards and show you some code if you, if you would like. And if anyone else wants to see something, you can come by afterwards. Um, I'd rather not really go into code right now. <laughs> um, any other questions? I do not. I do not. Um, and that's more for the, the dev design because you actually start to go into code. Anything else? Right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.